Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss Lit Code question 1751 that says maximum number of events that can be attended to. So guys, although this question is tagged as a hard question, but this is somewhere between medium to medium hard question and it's not that difficult. You can easily, uh, not that easily, but yeah, you can get some idea how to solve this question by looking at the question description and that, there are some minor optimization we can make in this approach part, like uh, in the brute force approach to come up with the best solution that we can have. So yeah guys, stick to the end and watch the complete video. Now here, uh, in the question, uh, you are given one events uh, atom. So this is a 2D atom. And each index of these events consists of three things. That is start day, end day, as well as the value. So if you perform the event i, then you will get value of i, as well as you will block the start i, start day of i, as well as end day of i. So this time interval you will block if you perform that event. Okay, so this i event starts at the start day and ends at the end day and if you attend this event then you will receive this value at max you can attend k such events okay and uh, you can only e attend one event at a time so if you uh, choose to attend an event you must attend the entire event also so like you cannot uh, leave the event from between you have to attend the entire event and as well as you can only attend one event at a time uh, yeah and uh, yeah this is you cannot attend two events where one of them starts and other ends on the same day like let's say the one event starts on the uh, day two and other ends on the day two you cannot attend that type of event and yeah, at the end you need to return the maximum sum of values that you can receive by attending events right see guys things are clear that uh, you will be given one array uh, 2d array of events that consists of start time and time as well as value that you can get further you cannot attend uh, more than one event at a time and at max you can attend k events and the third thing is we need to maximize the value that we can achieve. So we have to pick the event smartly in order to uh, achieve the maximum value, right? We have to make some good choices here to get the optimal answer. So if you take a look at the first example, uh, here we are given three events. This is event one, event two and event three and k equals to two. That means you can attend at max two events. Now here, let's say uh, you attended event one. So, uh, so Okay, event zero that is numbering from zero. You attended this event. Uh, it starts from here and ends here. Okay, starts on the day one and ends at the day two, right? And you will uh, get the value of four. Now after this, can you attend event one? Yeah, you can attend event one because it starts at the day three. See, this event ended at the day two and this starts from day three. So that's why you can attend this. So you attended this and you get the value three. Now, can you attend this event two? No, we cannot attend this because at the time of the event two we are already attending either event zero or event one right so we cannot attend event two so yeah that way what you can get is you can get a maximum value of seven right so there was one other way to solve this you don't attend event zero you don't attend event one and you only attend event two so in that case you will gain a value of only one and that is not an optimal answer right so that's why we choose to attend event zero and event one in order to get maximum value possible. Now let's take a look at the second example. Here, uh, let's say we attended event zero, we gain value four. We attended event one, we gain value three. And we cannot attend event two, right? Because it is overlapping with others. So yeah, in this case, maximum value you can get is four plus three, that is seven. Now, let's say you didn't attend events zero you didn't attend event one and you only attended event two in that case you are getting value 10 right so that is the optimal answer right that is a uh, uh, like better answer than seven so yeah in this case we will only attend event two because it is giving us the maximum value possible and yeah that is 10 and yeah so we return 10 as our answer okay now in the third example uh uh, just uh, uh, here k equals to 3 keep this in mind here k is 3 so let's say we attend event 0 1 and 2 they 3 are not overlapping then in that case you will gain 3 plus 2 plus 1 so that is 6 total value right right is that optimal no so let's say you attended event 1 2 and 3 in that case you will get 9 as our answer and that is optimal yeah that is the best answer you can get so yeah we attend event 1 2 and 3 because we cannot, uh, although event one is not overlapping, but we can only attend three events at here, right? Three events here. So yeah, we would attend event one, two, and three to get the maximum value. So I hope you guys have understood that what we are trying to do here. 
we are simply trying to make the best choices in order to get most optimal answer so the intuition from this question description is that uh, you have to make some choices here to you attend the event and not to attend the event and if you attend uh, let's say if you attend event i then there are some restriction it will take because it will block a time from start of i to uh, start date to end date of i so it will block that time so yeah the next j event you have to you want to attend will depends on the start and end time of the event time so we have to take care of two things let's say first is the choices we have to make efficient uh, choices now the second thing is if we uh, if we choose a, a particular event then it will affect the next event that we can take because the start time and the end time will get blocked so we can only attend the next event whose start time is after the end time of the current event right so this blocks start time and end time that we are we need to take care okay so first thing is the choices are clear that either we take a part in the event or, or attend the current event or we ignore the current event right we have two choices two simple choices and based on this two simple choices we can easily write recursive solution right there are, we have two options only you attend the event and not to attend if you attend the event you get some particular value and if you don't attend the event you don't get that value right and in order to attend the event you have to also check uh, the end time of the previous event that we attended right then only we can make a decision either can we can attend this event or not right so keeping these things in mind we can write a recursive solution here now what is one optimization step we can do here okay so let's say if you select the event of idx so let's say you selected this event of this index event now the next possi uh, possible event must start after the event idx so that is the event of ins so, so the next so this is the next event so the next event start time so zeroth index is a start date must be greater than the current event end date right this must be greater than the current event end date so we have to um, uh, like maintain this condition in order to uh, verify yeah that we can attend this event or not so if you want to make a decision that either can we attend or not so for that you have to take care of this condition so this will help you to identify can we attend this event or not further how it is possible to find next uh, event next possible event right how it is how you can find that so one you can do is uh, you can take a linear time for loop that means you can iterate all the events and then try to find out that if you have attended this event then you can check that what other event is there whose start date is greater than the current attended event you can check that by using a for loop so that is one way and the second way is by using binary search here so this uh, is a optimization step you can say uh, while uh, while making a decision of finding this jth event right so what we would do is in the binary search see binary search only applies on the sorted array so we would sort all the events on uh, start date on the basis of the start date and then we would perform a binary search okay how we would perform the binary search let's take a look so uh, uh, let's say uh, here this is a find next function and this is a binary search function means the core logic inside this function is a binary search so here we have taken these events as well as the current event that we are performing okay so just forget about this thing let's concentrate here so uh, we have already sorted these events right we have already sorted this event here now they are sorted on the basis of the start date because the first index was the start date so they are sorted automatically on the basis of start date now let's try to understand this thing first that how binary search is helping here so here we have taken this index so this index is the current event so this is current event now we are trying we are uh, we are attending the current event so then we have to check what is the end date this is the end date of the current event so that is present at the index one index uh, one right then we make a binary search from index plus one up till the size of the event right from where l is this and h is this so we make this binary search here and if the uh, and for each mid we check if the start date of this mid event is greater than this end then uh, then yeah that is one possible answer okay and and we make h equal to mid minus one that means we try to find a better event whose start date is much closer to the end date see the start date uh, much be uh, is it should it should be minimum uh, integer value that is greater than end date so it should be the least integer that is but greater than end date of this 
current event so we have to find this least integer or least value of the start date that is greater than the end date so that's why we would move towards the left to find uh, some smaller start date which is which is the which is to satisfy this condition right okay so that's why we move towards the left and yeah if we don't get the answer then we we have to move towards the right right because if this condition fails then uh, the answer is not possible with the current start uh, with the start date so yeah we move towards the right in order to get some bigger value of the start date so this is a typical binary search we are trying to uh, perform in order to find the minimum start date that is greater than the end date okay so that's one thing and this will give us the index value of the of that event whose start date is greater than the end date okay and we simply pass the index value here this answer we are storing that index okay so that's one thing now uh, this is our main core logic for this approach so here what we are doing is if currently forget about this dp it's easy memorization is easy but first understand the recursive approach so here we have called this all function we have passed events k and 0 0 is the initial index right this is our base condition if index is greater than equal to events dot size or k equals to 0 that means we we have attended all the events that we can right we can only attend k events so we have attended k events so that's why in both this condition we will simply return 0 hence no more values we can gain okay now afterwards as we already discussed that we have two options or two choices first choice is either to attend the event and second choice is to ignore the event so in the first choice if we are attending the event what we are do we we uh, like which gain that value like we add this value that is present in the index 2 inside the our answer 1 so this is uh, this is the first option we added the value that we are getting by attending this event and then we call the recursive solve function now the next possible event would uh, start after the current event and so we need to find this index so this index we are getting by calling this binary search function find next so here we are finding the next uh, we are finding the event who start date is minimum but greater than the current event end date right it is a minimum possible start date greater than the current event end date so that's how we are finding the next index right next possible index to uh, or the next possible event that we can attend so this is uh, about the option 1 right and in the option 2 we are simply ignoring the current event so we don't gain any um uh, so we don't gain any value and the next possible is index plus 1 see guys if you uh, can attain index then you can surely attain index plus 1 right in this case we don't have to find uh, whether can we can we attain index plus 1 or not because these are sorted all the events are sorted so let's say if uh, index has some starting date sd so this index plus 1 would have some greater sd or sd plus 1 means it will have greater than or equal to the current start date because they are already sorted on the basis of start date so then if you can achieve the uh, means if you can attain the current index event then you can surely attain index plus 1 right okay so in this case when you are ignoring the current event then we don't have to check and we uh, able to attain the next event or not we would surely be able to attain right and at the end we return what is the uh, maximum of both of them that is the what is the best answer right now this is the recursive code recursive plus binary search okay now the thing here is we can memorize it so here there are two changing variables k and index okay and if you look at the constraints then in the constraints we are given the k multiplied by uh, n that is the number of events is uh, less than equal to 10 to the power 6 uh, 10 to the power it is 6 so this is less than equal to 10 to the power 6 so yeah uh, if you uh, if you perform any code for k multiplied by n then that is less than 10 to the power 9 right because it is 10 to the power 6 and yeah this won't give you tle so if you perform a code with this time complexity then you won't get time limit accelerator okay now um, so we are simply memorizing these two changing variables so here we have taken index and k this dp in this this dp and this dp of size n and k n plus 1 and k plus 1 and we here initialize as minus 1 okay so this is one dp another thing is we can also store if uh, if this is the if let's say x is the current event and let's say y is the next possible event so if you are attending uh, the current event x then you can attend the next event y so we can also memorize it right if idx so for each index or the each event i uh, we can store the, what is the next event j so that simple thing we are storing here that is in the dp index right so this dp of index so means in, uh, we are storing 
what if if let's say the current event is i then, then what is the next possible event that we can attend so we are storing that value in this dp so yeah guys that's all for the coding side and now talking about the time and space complexity so the time complexity first thing here is n log n so that is for sorting we are sorting the event 2d vector so that will take n log n now second thing is n into k not n into k but n into k log of n see here we are trying to fill this 2d dp array and this dp array is of size n into k right it is of size n into k so over a time complexity or different states that we would process would be n into k multiplied by log of n because we are also performing this binary search here for each state we are performing binary search and this binary search in worst cases it will take log of n time right so yeah guys that's for the time complexity part and the space complexity is big of n for the dp index for this dp index it is big of n big of n into k for this dp as well as recursive stack that is the height of the recursive tree that will form so that will take uh, some storage this recursive stack would take some storage equals to the height of the tree so yeah guys that's for the complexity part and yeah that's all for this video i hope you guys have understood the intuition as well as the approach part as well as the coding here right so yeah guys if you have still any doubts then do let me know in the comment section make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel thank you